Now on Bloomberg Intelligence, Muni's in focus. For the final time, here's Joe Mysack. All right, uh, the focus on munis is brought to you by Build America Mutual, insures U.S. municipal bonds that finance essential American infrastructure and provides guaranteed income to any, to improve any portfolio. Be part of Building America, invest in BAM insured bonds. And I love that intro because it is true. Joe Mysick, the muni man himself, is retiring today, and I can't believe he's not phoning it in, but he's here, he's in studio, and he's excited uh, to talk about munis. Uh, Joe Mysick, editor, Bloomberg Brief for Municipal Market. Market. No phoning it in. No, no, you are here in studio. Paul will be impressed, but he's sunning himself uh, on the beach right now. Um, Joe, you, you made it. How do you feel today? Great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do on Monday? <laughs> I, you know, I kind of planned it out. I'm going to, th I think I'm going to go to uh, a diner and have uh, 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 bacon and eggs and, and read the newspaper at 9 a.m. Okay. Are you only going to read about munis, or are you going to, like, at expand? At that late hour, can you imagine? <laughs> no, actually, I, I literally cannot. 9 a.m. Um, anyway, w we, you will be very missed, and we will probably call you on your phone every once in a while. Um, and we don't want to detract from your expertise in munis either. Uh, what's the big issue in the market as you depart? Well, uh, all the bankers are very happy so far this year because we've had uh, I, I think I checked it this morning and so far we have 235.9 billion dollars in long-term municipal bond volume that's up almost 40 percent wow. over last year's pace and uh, what it means uh, basically is we it looks like we're headed toward a, uh, a record year. I think the, the previous record was something like $458 billion. Uh, so we could very well be, be headed toward a $475, maybe even a $500 billion year, especially if you get a little interest rate cut and yields start to subside a bit. You'll see even more refunding volume than uh, we've seen so far, and we've seen some. So uh, the, the big issue in the market market right now is supply and uh, the the states and localities just keep uh, coming to market and uh, they're finding very good reception for all their deals so that compares to when you started long-term muni bond sales totaled only 46 billion dollars <laughs> Joe talk to us about the evolution of this market that you have had the privilege to cover for so long and 43 years where we go from here wow the you know the the market is is um and <clears throat> i want to say it's how is it how has it grown up i mean it's it's difficult to to say the market's grown up uh because you know you started having the tax exemption in uh, 1913 uh, but uh the Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board um, was established in 1975. So I started in January of 1981. And, and beginning around then, the MSRB, the self-regulatory organization, started putting together new rules, including bans on pay to play. So, for example, underwriters can't, uh, um, uh, when they solicit business from an issuer, they can't also load up all the politicians there with uh, 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 political campaign contributions, which was a real issue in the municipal market for many years. Uh, pay to play. Jesse Unruh, the, the treasurer of uh, uh, California in his last uh, iteration, uh, was the one who said uh, money is the mother's milk of uh, politics. And, uh, you know, it was it was a, a very different world. Um, what else can we say? Well, from 46 billion to almost 500 billion today. Um, so, you know, you've had a big increase in volume. Um, You've also uh, had numerous assaults on the tax exemption, and uh, the the the, um, the the I think one of the best things to to come out of uh, all these you know 
efforts at tax reform uh, is that the issuer community is now energized to defend the tax exemption, which mm -hmm. is the thing that really makes the market go around. Um, so you don't think that that's going to be up for debate at all, whoever wins the White House in November, yeah? <laughs> well, you know, you, you have a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, of, of things in play, but yeah, I think that that almost whatever happens, you're going to have a, a president who's going to uh, throw out an idea for tax reform. Okay, because if that happens, you're coming back. <laughs> just and the tax just reform, to be totally clear. Tax reform usually involves uh, someone suggesting to uh, suggesting that they get rid of the tax exemption, even though the savings is not all that much. But there's not a lot of places you can, uh, you can find savings. So, uh, yeah. Now, of course, you do need... Uh, you know, what, you have to have the, the president and you have to have his party holding probably the Senate and the House to get anything done. But never say never. One thing that seems really intriguing to me about the muni bond market beat is that you get to learn and you get to write about so many fun, can I call them, topics? Yes, you Stadiums, can say airports, just Maybe Amtrak. Amtrak, yeah. <laughs> tell us about, uh, tell us a little bit about <laughs> kind of the, the trends that you've watched recently through the lens of the muni bond market. Wow. What, uh, well, the, the, you know, the high yield market, the high yield muni market, it, um, the, the, early in my career, um, high yield bonds were sold to mom and pop investors, individual investors, uh, which led to a certain amount of outrage on the part of the SEC uh, because they thought uh, this was not a good idea because what happens? Uh, these bonds have a, a higher uh, propensity for default. And when that happens, individual investors tend to get very excitable and uh, they start to... Uh, 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 chat with the, the members of Congress. Uh, so I think the, the one of the big things I saw was that the high yield deals are now almost all sold either on a, a 144A basis to uh, sophisticated investors or uh, even when they're not, they're sold in very high denominations, $100,000, $500,000 to keep the riskiest deals out of the hands of individual investors. And I think that's a, uh, one of the things that, that's uh, uh, a, a kind of signature good thing that the market has done. I would be remiss if I let you go without asking about the congestion pricing for the MTA. And I'm asking for a friend. His name may or may not be John Tucker. Uh, do you think the MTA is coming to grips to this? Like, what do you, what, what's your crystal ball for this they've, as you're sitting in the diner eating your eggs? Well, they've come to grips with it and they, you know, are taking an ax to their uh, capital spending plans. But I really think that uh, post-election, congestion pricing is coming back mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to be enacted and I think people just take a look at the the uh, traffic out there and how much it costs the city of New York and how much it costs uh, the uh, uh, various uh, uh, drivers uh, and, and I just is it's going to be uh, enacted if I if I had to say it's not it's not dead. Joe, it has been a sincere pleasure getting to know you uh, these last few months in this Muni moment. Um, I think all of us at Bloomberg Radio, TV, and News will miss you greatly, and we wish you all the best of luck on this next stage of your life. And if you get lonely, come back in. Do not be shy. Uh, we will miss you, Joe Mysek uh, of Bloomberg uh, Editorial. He's covered the muni market for over 40 decades, and we send him off now uh, into retirement to the diner at 9 a.m. Monday morning, reading the paper with eggs uh, and bacon. It has been a pleasure. Thank you.